Greetings to everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my devotions. Grace and peace be with you. My topic for today is patience with the erring. And my scripture lesson will be taken from Matthew 13 verses 24 through 30 and i'll read another parable put ye forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sow good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence them then hath it tears? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while he gather up the tears, he root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tears, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barns. Here in that a reading of a portion of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, glory be to God. Now, not all who profess to be workers for Christ are true disciples. Among those who bear his name and who are even numbered with his workers are some who do not represent him in character. They are not governed by his principles. These persons are often a cause of perplexity and discouragement to their fellow workers who are young in Christian experience. But none need be misled. Christ has given us a perfect example. He bids us follow him. Till the end of time, there will be tears among the wheat. When the servants of the householder, in their zeal for his honor, asked permission to root out the tears, the master said, Nay, lest while he gather up the tears, he root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. In his mercy and long suffering, God bears patiently with the perverse and even the false-hearted. Among Christ's chosen apostles was Judas the traitor. Should it then be a cause of surprise or discouragement that there are false-hearted ones among his workers today? If he who reads the heart could bear with him who he knew was to be his betrayer, with what patience should we bear with those at fault? And not all, even of those who appear more faulty, are like Judas. Peter, impetuous, hasty, and self-confident, often appear to far greater disadvantage than Judas did. He was often reproved by the Savior. But what a life of service and sacrifice was his. What a testimony does it bear to the power of God's grace. So far as we are capable, we are to be to others what Jesus was to his disciples when he walked and talked with them on the earth. Regard yourselves as missionaries, first of all, among your fellow workers. Often it requires a vast amount of time and labor to win one's souls to Christ. 
And when a soul turns from sin to righteousness, there is a joy in the presence of the angels. Thank you that the ministering spirits who watch over these souls are pleased to see how indifferently they are treated by some who claim to be Christians. Should Jesus deal with us as we too often deal with one another? Who of us could be saved? Remember that you cannot read hearts. You do not know the motives which prompted the actions that you that to you look wrong. There are many who have not received a right education. Their characters are warped. They are hard and gnarled and seem to be crooked in every way. But the grace of Christ can transform them. Never cast them aside. Never drive them to discouragement or despair by saying, you have disappointed me and I will not try to help you. A few words spoken hastily on the provocation, just what we think they deserve, may cut the cords of influence that should have bound their hearts to ours. Let us look at the influence of a consistent Christian life. The consistent life, the patient forbearance, the spirit unruffled under provocation is always the most conclusive argument and the most solemn appeal. If you have had opportunities and advantages that have not fallen to the lot of others, consider this and be ever a wise, careful, gentle teacher. In order to have the wax take a clear, strong impression of the seal, you do not dash the seal upon it in a hasty, violent way. You carefully place the seal on the plastic wax and quietly, steadily press it down until it has hardened in the mold. In like manner, deal with human souls. The continuity the continuity of Christian's influence is the secret of its power. And this depends on the steadfastness of your manifestation of the character of Christ. Help those who have heard by telling them of your experiences. Show how, when you made grave mistakes, patient kindness and helpfulness on the part of your fellow workers gave you courage and hope. Until the judgment, you will never know the influence of a kind, considerate course toward the inconsistent, the unreasonable, the unworthy. When we meet with ingratitude and betrayal of sacred trust, we are rose to show our contempt and indignation. This is the guilty expect. This the guilty expect. They are prepared for it. But kind of forbearance take them by surprise and often awaken their better impulse and arouses a longing for a nobler life. Galatians 6, 1 and 2 tells us, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, he which are spiritual, Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. All who profess to be children of God should bear in mind that as missionaries they will be brought into contact with all classes of minds. There are the refined and the coarse, the humble and the proud, the religious and the skeptical, the educated and the ignorant, the rich and the poor. These varied minds cannot be treated alike, yet all need kindness and sympathy. By mutual contact, our minds should receive polish and refinement. We are dependent upon one another, closely bound together by the ties of human brotherhood. There's a little song that says, even forming each and other to depend, a master or a servant or a friend, bids each and other for assistance call.
till one man's weakness grows the strength of all. It is through the social relations that Christianity comes in contact with the world. Every man or woman who has received the divine illumination is to shed light on the dark pathway of those who are unacquainted with the better way. Social power, sanctified by the Spirit of Christ, must be improved in bringing souls to the Savior. Christ is not to be hid away in the heart as a coveted treasure, sacred and sweet to be enjoyed solely by the possessor. We are to have Christ in us as a well of water springing up into everlasting life, refreshing all who come in contact with us. Let us develop Christian character. Christian life is more than many take it to be. It does not consist wholly in gentleness, patient, meekness, and kindliness. These graces are essential. But there is need also of courage, force, energy, and perseverance. The path that Christ marks out is a narrow, self-denying path. To enter that path and press on through difficulties and discouragement requires men who are more than weaklings. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your great and precious promises. You have taught us that you have a plan for each one of us. Your hand guides our steps and provides us with all we need. Because you are good. You want only the best for us. It can be difficult to understand your perfect will for us at times. What seems to be good, what seems to be good, dear Lord, is sometimes not. Help us that we may understand your will for us. Speak to us through your holy words so that we might continue in your understanding. Open our eyes and ears to hear your word. Teach us to believe and help our unbelief. Help us to walk in the path that you have laid, us, laid out for us. Help us to be kind to each other. No matter what circumstances, Lord God. Father God, we look to you today. Let our life be a light shining out through the night. Let us bring others to your fold as we seek your direction. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have been blessed today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Have yourself a wonderful and productive day. Bless.